स्थापकाय धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम यथाग्निर्दाहिका शक्ति रामकृष्णे स्थिताहिया सर्विद्यास्वता सारदा प्रणमा नम श्रीयतिराजाय विवेकानंदसूर सच्चिस्वूपाय स्वामीने तापहारी dear friends who are joining to listen to this lecture or to watch this lecture uh, now or maybe in future and also uh, especially those my friends who are from the new york uh, queens and bronx area for whom this lecture is specially being given uh, my namaskars to you all uh, i hope everybody is doing well and uh, i have chosen a very important topic good for you know understanding one of the basic problems of our spiritual life and that is the bondage of work in bhagavad gita it is called karma bandha and this is not something theoretical friends uh, we feel it all the time that karma binds us karma amader ke bandhane phele this is our experience as uh, we do some action it produces some results which again pushes us for the next action it is like a chain action that goes on like uh, there has been you know the uh, many such schemes of getting so called quick money mm it is basically it is going to you know go on pro proliferating that everybody is uh, uh, gets uh, a message that uh, well if you make three subscribers like yourself then uh, i just give uh, some 10 dollars and then uh, you can get a uh, 100 dollar loan on that so uh, it appears very attractive so you tell your three friends then they tell their three other friends and uh, it goes on ending as it were so action also is there is a comment that the volume is too low so maybe just pick it so oh, is the volume better now uh yeah you see this is not something that i can really control uh, probably it is to be controlled at your end uh i i have brought this uh, a tablet closer to my mouth maybe uh now it will be better so anyway uh, what i was discussing is that the action is like that it sets uh, an exponential chain reaction as it were uh, one things that let me complete this action and then done with it no uh, it produces many results which again result in many more uh, actions so uh, it 
like that keeps on going and growing. And we get kind of bound, everything kind of puts uh, uh, a, one more chain on us. Another uh, circle of rope is uh, put on us to tie us down. So now uh, the drag of work is very strong. We feel we have to do work. And, and then when we see the binding effects of it, we try to get out of it. And then the pendulum, as it were, moves to the other end. I will not do any work. I will just sit. All this work is useless. Uh, there is no point in it. Uh, one gets that sense of terrible frustration and irritation associated with it. Uh, but there is no alternative. You are pushed to do karma, the ego pushes us to get into work. There is absolutely no choice to it, friends. Mm. That is why in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is categorically told by Krishna, Nahi kaschit api jatu tishthati akarmakrit. Even for a moment, uh, one cannot be without doing work. Uh, it is because there is this ego I. It is vibrating all the time. It is work going on. The thoughts keep on moving. Uh, no, I will not think as if it is in your power. Uh, I will not think. Stop. Try to stop. Uh, it is uh, not possible. Uh, it will become more of a, a fast vortex going on in the head. I am not going to think. I am not going to think. I am not going to think. No, it is. Uh, uh, that will be the work. Uh, it is. I am not going to go anywhere. Well, uh, you will uh, go. You have to go. You have to move. Uh, you will be pushed to do work. It is a bondage. We become bond slave. Uh, that Swami Vivekananda's poem, Shokhar Prati. Uh, so he says there that Karmo Pash, Gole Bandhajar, Krita Das, Bolo Kothajas. Uh, where are you uh, going to go? You are bound tightly by this uh, rope of action, rope of work. It is going to drag you. There is uh, no way uh, how to stop it and how to become free. As you all know, as the students of Vedanta, uh, and especially of Sri Ramakrishna, uh, Mataji, Vivekananda, that the goal of human life is to realize God and which is, in other words, realize our true freedom. We have to attain to freedom which is our true nature. And here is the bondage. I am kicked around. Uh, I have no, like a slave. A slave cannot say, I will not work. Mm, you are bound to do work. Otherwise, you will have to work uh, with hunter on your back. So, your choice is whether you want to work without a hunter on your back or uh, with hunter. That's all. Uh, this is such a terrible condition that we have, have been reduced to. The problem is that so many desires are constantly bursting forth in our mind. 
they don't let us sit quiet at all. Uh, I have to be uh, working. Uh, see, you can lie down in the bed thinking that no, um, uh, all this is no good. I am not <laughs> going to do any work. आर उन्हें काज होलो कुतुब दिन आर काज कर बो जो थिस्ट हुए छे आर एकोन विश्राम कर बो घूमो बो आह but this will not last because the desires are there they will push you from inside nobody else needs to tell you go and do work your desires uh, have made Uh, you are a slave, so you get up and start working, and then uh, after seeing the disastrous uh, binding results of work, you want to run away from it, but there is that is another work. Now, uh, where can you go? It is. Uh, a terrible terrible situation friends uh, it is and we do not realize that what is it that makes me slave and uh, it is uh, the sages that point out to us uh, what is this uh, that is making you the slave this is that what thakur called ami amar i and mine uh, and this i and mine is a very funny thing that what is i what is mine uh, very difficult to draw a demarcating line that here the i ends then mine begins mm, it is Many times, my body I call as I. <laughs> uh, I went for walking. I I went uh, to some other place. Say I went to see Niagara. Did I go? The body went there. Uh, I don't know if I also went, but I call the body as I. Uh, it is. I say that I feel so elated, so happy. It is the mind. I don't feel uh, there is. Uh, there is no I as such. The mind's quality is happiness or uh, irritation, anger, uh, misery. These are all the emotions rising in mind, and therefore. One cannot uh, really say this is my mind, but I call it. It is I. It becomes I. So therefore, this is the cause of uh, having to work. And there is no cessation. So only one way that Bhagavad Gita speaks of, and. Uh, Thakur also mentions that how long is has one got to do work? It is still the knowledge dawns. Thakur gives an example. Of course, it was example of those days. And nowadays, in modern times, you understand the spirit of it. But this example is hard to see. Uh, uh, that there used to be uh, a joint family system. That so many uh, means uh, there would be uh, the uh, older people, younger people, married and married and all that. So uh, when a girl would get married, she would be going to her in-laws, where there will be, uh, of course, her husband, her. Uh, Parents in law, uh, there will be brothers and sisters in law, and uh, many other people. A big household could be there. That is, uh, that was called joint family. 
these days somebody told the the definition of joint family these days is husband and wife living together and uh, that is the joint family because that also doesn't uh, uh, happen many times so uh, now in that joint family the mother in law would be kind of a ruler you know so she would distribute the work to uh, uh, other women the household work i mean to other women in the house that okay this is your responsibility this is what you have to do uh, it is you who would go and fetch the water hey you get uh, involved in cooking and so forth lot of works now uh, if uh, one of the daughters in law if she gets pregnant now mother in law reduces her work sri ramakrishna says that the now uh, she uh, it is not good for her to take up heavy work because she is carrying <coughs> and so for the safety of uh, hers as well as uh, the fetus she should not be doing uh, too much of laborious uh, things so she reduces the work as the uh, baby uh, in the in the stomach becomes and gets grown her work reduces a mother in law reduces her work as the fetus goes on growing so this is uh, actually the analogy here is that it is like the growth of knowledge as the knowledge grows that all is god uh, then the uh, ignorance reduces that is the meaning of knowledge knowledge grows and ignorance beats retreat so as the knowledge grows and ignorance reduces what happens i and mine reduce and then the tendency to do lot of work that also reduces the person may externally be seen as doing work but uh, really mm, there isn't work that is getting work is that that person is not doing much work there are not too many desires that are propelling or pushing that person uh, to do the work that slavery bondage gets reduced and when the baby uh, is born the infant is born uh, just uh, around that time all the mother in law has uh, removed all work from this uh, uh, daughter in law now her work is only to take care of the baby no other work is needed to be done so that is the birth of knowledge the baby knowledge is born and now uh, the ignorance and the result of ignorance that is bondage uh, they are all gone so till then this bondage of work is there uh, the question is how now to get over it uh, there is a uh, the i have to do work but then is there a way by which uh, this bondage of work will be gone what should i do for it and is there a way that i can conduct the work in a particular way uh, that the uh, knowledge will gradually dawn is there a method involved in it or it is just mm, keep on doing whatever work do as you have been doing and when the knowledge dawns it is all gone till then you don't need to be worried about it you can't do anything about it no friends uh, there is a method fortunately and that there is a method by which 
uh, we can purify ourselves by directing the, our tendencies to work uh, in a definite way. The work has to be done understood. But that doesn't mean that doing the work in whatever way is the same. No. Uh, there is a work that leads to bondage and there is a way of working by which uh, the bondage gets loosened. It, it takes you towards freedom uh, by cleansing your mind of desires. As we saw earlier, it is the desires that propel us to do the work. And this science and technology of doing the work uh, in this fashion uh, is called Karma Yoga, the yoga of action. Uh, yoga of action is learning to do the work in such a way, in such a skillful way, so that the uh, work would get done, but it will not be able to put a bondage, a noose around our neck. Hmm. That is the skill of the work as Bhagavad Gita says. Uh, what is the skill of the work is to you know, do it as yoga, yoga karma sukaushalam. In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you get this very a beautiful verse, uh, the end of which is that it is buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sikrita dushkrite tasmad yoga ya yujjasva yoga karma sukaushalam that by knowing that uh, every work uh, will have some good effect, some bad effect. Uh, there is no way that you can do work to get only good effect. Every good effect will have uh, the other side balancing it as bad effect. Sukrita, Dushkrita. Mm, these are the words. Sukrita, Dushkrita. You want to do Sukrita. Nobody says I am setting out to do a bad work. But uh, one has to remember here that there is not a single work in this world which is only good. Mm, it is. This misconception has to be kicked out, friends mercilessly kicked out that I will do only good, <laughs> good work. Every good work has an evil component to it uh, whether we are aware of it or not. It is uh, Swami Vivekananda has given so many examples of it that you go to do something good but then uh, something uh, that is not good automatically is associated with it. There is no choice, absolutely uh, there is no choice to it. So uh, we have to uh, accept it, that every action uh, will be good and evil the point is that it is it will be good for us if our intentions in doing uh, are pure and good. And what is meant good here is unselfish. We are not propelled uh, by a desire for our own enjoyment to do that work. And then that work uh, from our standpoint is good 
for us but it will have from some other angle it will have some bad effects as well uh, and i have seen so many such examples a lot of training has been uh, over the years received while doing works in different places i am sure you all must have had it that you would go to do something that you think is very good and mm, it is uh, once i remember uh, when we were uh, starting uh, a, that physical therapy unit at our center in nagpur because that treatment uh, was needed by so many people and uh, it was quite costly for people who didn't have the means so it was thought let us we have some spare money so let us uh, build this unit and it will be very useful for poor people and we were uh, smarting under the assumption that we are doing a very good work and uh, once uh, this news was already spread all around that we are that a physical therapy unit is going to be started here so one day uh, i had gone for some shopping and in some the in that shop uh one lady looking at me came to me and said uh are you from that ramakrishna mission uh, where you are starting a physical physical therapy department i said yes yes sure and her face become you know became a, a bit Uh, full of uh, criticism and uh, said she said with why are you doing it said well what is i was taken aback I, i thought that it's a good work that we are doing and well why it is it's a nice thing isn't it ah. and so that uh, this is a, a treatment that these days uh many are prescribing for some cures and there is not many these physical therapy uh, these doctors who can give relief to patients who are poor so we are starting it she said uh, i am a physical therapist and i spent so much money to get educated get trained i just started uh, about a year ago uh, my own facility of physical therapy now if you start at who is going to come to us all will go to that because you will be giving it uh, at a very nominal rate and so we will be just uh, uh, losing everything we will have to close it down and i realize hmm, see there is a work that you may be having good intentions but let us not think that it will not have any bad effect it will have some miseries in the world you will be creating uh, it is uh, you will be stepping on some toes uh, unconsciously so uh, there is no work that is completely free from anything uh, any sp- spreading misery or spreading disease and you be kill as swami vivekananda says that even our breathing think of it it is death to so many uh bacteria just by breathing uh, so you may be uh, propelling your life by that but isn't that the death of so many others uh, mass murdering is your way of living uh, it sounds harsh but that is how it is so how should we work mm mm-hmm. so the method suggested by this great uh, upanishadic technology 
yoga of action is uh, the way out and the only way out friends and it is not that it is something new uh, it has been there even uh, in the early times of uh, the vedic uh, times called sanhita time uh, it is the sanhita are the earliest portions of vedas so uh, there is the isha vasya upanishad which, which belongs to this sanhita part it is the 40th chapter of the uh, this uh, shukla yajurveda vajasini sanhita so it is is called therefore sanhita upanishad because it uh, belongs to that sanhita the old part uh, of the vedas uh, so there also you see after telling that uh, try to see god in everything mm, that uh, cover everything by god because that is the reality ईशावास्यमिदग्गम सर्वम यत किंच जगत्याम जगत ते न त्यक्ते न भुंजी था माग्रिध कस्य स्विधनम दैट कवर एवरीथिंग बाय गॉड Uh, who is actually present who is the reality of everything so cover everything by god and that is the renunciation means uh, now uh, the seeing the truth is renunciation and so uh, and that will protect bhunji tha protect your spiritual urge that will protect your uh, the the true essence of things so and don't aspire for a wealth of anybody money of anybody uh, whose money is after all so it is don't uh, uh, go after that don't aspire for that now this is very good but Mm, i am not able to see god in everything uh, it is uh, cannot cover everything with god uh, the cover if even if i put the cover of god uh, on everything the cover is so transparent that i see all the things and don't see god mm. so this is uh, what happens till uh, we are spiritually matured but then how to get that maturity the second verse of the upanishad tells that well you have to keep on doing work with this awareness in background that everything is actually god kurvan neveh karmani ji ji vishesh shatagam samaha as long as the life last 100 years that is generally considered the limit of human life so uh, 100 years or whatever a time one lives uh, live by doing work with this awareness that god alone is the reality of everything let this understanding be in the background what happens if this understanding is in the background that is where the action becomes now yoga <laughs> uh, the upanishad says evam tvai nanyatha itah asti a uh, first thing is there is no other way you cannot give up work uh, because you do not see god everywhere uh, you are seeing i and mine and so work i runs after mind <laughs> i run after the world the work has to be there it is you cannot avoid it if there is i and world then i runs after the world and uh, that is how the work happens 
so you have no alternative. But na karma lipyate. If you have this understanding that God is actually everything, it may not be experienced at that time. Uh, but it will ripen into experience this uh, belief or the awareness what the sages have told that God is the reality of everything. If it is in the background, then what happens? Then with because of this background, the work will not be able to bind you. Na karma lipyate. Ah, that uh, it is, that is uh, the science of karma yoga. And as we do this, practice this, we start uh, becoming uh, perfect. As you know, practice makes us perfect. Uh, not that at a just start and it will become perfect next moment. It may not happen like that. We may have to do it for, say, 50 years or many, many lifetimes. But uh, it will happen. Mm. Uh, there is guarantee because as we practice it, we attain perfection the knowledge increases. That is the very special uh, quality of work that is being used in Karma Yoga. And what is it? The attitude with which we do work. That attitude goes on getting strengthened by the work that we do. So, if we try to put in this attitude that God alone is real and that is the only goal of life, then uh, as I do work with this understanding, this attitude and uh, with the sense, therefore, that I am working for God, that is another way of doing it. We shall take up uh, a passage from Swami Vivekananda's Karma Yoga uh, on this topic. But then what happens? The work goes on. But our attitude that God is actually in everything uh, goes on becoming enhanced, gains more and more strength. <laughs> this actually happens, friends. Uh, logically, of course, it can be uh, explained. But as we practice, we will be able to experience this. Then, uh, they, because the work is being done with this attitude, there are many, many facets of this central theme. Uh, but the, the theme that to know that God is the reality of everything and work with it. Then, uh, keeping this in mind, that uh, the work then uh, strengthens this attitude. This muscle gets strengthened uh, because it gets worked upon. And that is, uh, to put it in this way, that uh, and thus, we see gradually the work that we are doing now instead of becoming becoming a cause of bondage it becomes a means of freeing us uh, its nature gets changed otherwise it is true that work by its very nature tends to bind and there is no escape from it, whosoever it may be doing work. As long as that I and mine is there and the work is done, propelled by 
uh, all these desires, uh, every work will create a bondage, maybe sometimes a pleasant bondage, sometimes unpleasant bondage, and that's about it. Ah, uh, you may have a TV in your jail room or your jail will be, your room will be without a TV. Uh, that will be the only difference, but you will be bound. You will not be out of the jail. So, uh, one has to uh, feel this, that how the work is to be done then. There are the methods that one is that see the psychology of work binding us. It uh, produces uh, that blinding darkness is there that this that object is going to satisfy my desire. I want it. And then you rush towards it. Mm. Then what happens? <laughs> you get stuck with it. That is called attachment. <laughs> and does it not happen? Just think about it. Mm. That you went to do something and you get you got caught by it. It is that is what is uh, the our works uh, happen like this, that you do it, but then it has caught you. It is uh, like a man thinking that uh, this crocodile is going on that. Uh, so let me cross the river by. Are, mm, sitting on the back of the crocodile. Uh, it thought that it is uh, a log of wood. And so sat on that crocodile. Now where that fellow will go, you know. So it is, uh, you don't need a crystal ball for that. It is. So this is what happens, that work uh, swallows us. We get bound by it, tortured by it, and yet cannot get out of it. So, uh, I sometimes remember it is like that, that uh, there are some uh, types of knots. Uh, you have a cord and then uh, a knot is put on it. Now, there are various styles, types uh, of knots. One type is such, uh, very deceptive, that uh, your very efforts to open it seemingly goes on making it more and more tight. <laughs> because it looks like if you pull at this thread, uh, it will come out. Mm -hmm. And you pull it, it gets tightened further. Then you see, okay, let me try to open this way. And you find that, no, it is again tight and getting tightened. So there is one trick that the knower of uh, that, those skills, they know. And they therefore can uh, untie it. Otherwise, we cannot. So this uh, untying ourselves from the bondage of work, uh, is therefore of these two types uh, that uh, one is to learn to work without attachment. Uh, the words are simple, but they, it is easier said than done. It is one has to put in a lot of effort not to get attached, not to get caught in it. And therefore, one uh, means is to reduce the desire. Uh, that is, by this path of knowledge, that there is really nothing uh, that in the world which has any joy. Uh, all the joy is within. And so you do work without any expectations. And when one works without expectations, then 
uh, you do not get caught in it. Uh, but it is again a matter of lot of practice to to work and not have any desires or expectations associated with it. Uh, to facilitate it, to make it better is to do this work uh, with the uh, uh, spirit of offering it to God. Think of God, the God who is the reality as uh, that Ishopanishad verse we saw, uh, that God is in everything and so is in your work also. And so offer your work to that divine. Uh, make it a worship, conversion of work into worship. So that is another very important method of uh, doing this work without getting bound by, by it. But uh, this is all, uh, let us remember this, that it is all work is otherwise bondage. You have to be very skillfully doing it, yoga. And uh, there are so many beautiful examples given by Sri Ramakrishna that uh, how to do it, uh, especially it was asked uh, in the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, you read it, that uh, he was asked that uh, is it possible to get liberated uh, in the householder's life? Uh, can one realize God in householder's life? Uh, it is interesting, that is not topic today, but you can think about it. And nobody has ever asked the question like this. Uh, is it possible to realize God in a sannyasi's life, in a monk's life? Why always this question is asked? Uh, is it possible to realize God in householder's life? I'm not going to discuss it. This is uh, something, some... Uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, question that you have to solve yourselves. So, uh, but this is, question is often asked in Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, one answer Sri Ramakrishna gave, Sri Ramakrishna gave different answers, uh, both the positive and negative means. Uh, positive and negative means like uh, you are told to take a medication and follow certain restrictions. Mm. It is, uh, you uh, take this, you have high BP, so take this medicine and avoid eating excessive salt. So, do's and don't do's. So, uh, it is like that uh, Sri Ramakrishna gave the different things. One beautiful idea is that yes, in um, householder's life, you have to take care of uh, the children and other uh, household works you have to do. Think of yourself as a servant, as a nanny to children or the uh, housemaid, a house help. Uh, and then uh, like that, think of yourself instead of thinking that uh, it is yours. Uh, like the nanny knows that these children do not belong to her. Mm. So uh, the parents uh, can think and should think because after all it is truth, friends, <laughs> that those children do not in the least belong to you. With this attitude, if you do work, then mm, the bondage will not come. We will not get bound by doing work in this way because there is no mine. If there is I, mine, then the bondage. So practice it, think of it, 
that it is uh, you are just taking care of the children these are not yours any things those things in the household they are not yours mm. it is because that is the actuality uh, that it is uh, not at all yours tell me what is ours think of it you know uh, you may think that well this little pencil at least is mine well it is made of wood and that uh, 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 whatever it is uh, that other black material inside a stone so that is what makes it uh, a pencil it is not yours it is uh, you use it fine but it is not yours so the house that you live in is it yours you are living there Uh, but you have no claim at all to that it is uh, i bought it and i am paying so much mortgage on it uh, well that is your choice but then uh, that is uh, that doesn't mean it belongs to you mm. it is uh, the uh, the cockroaches staying there it belongs to them as well mm. it is uh, so there is nothing in the world that is really mine so just to acknowledge this truth the beauty of the truth is that <laughs> uh, uh, that even if we don't recognize it it uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we can escape it Mm, they you don't recognize it okay it is your loss uh, you will it will have to uh, be uh, you will have to succumb to it mm, it is uh, uh, that uh, uh, a tiger is uh, chasing you and then uh, even if you say no no i don't believe in tiger Uh, that doesn't have much effect on tiger you know it is <laughs> so uh, our non recognition of truth only hurts us it doesn't change the actual situation that's all so let us acknowledge accept and respectfully hold on to truth that nothing actually is mine Uh, this again is a matter of practice not as easy as uh, uh, it can be said but practice that no this money is not mine and uh, who is it well who knows it is not mine the house is not mine uh, the spouse is not mine the children are not mine uh, and see uh, you work much better with that and the uh, mental agonies are reduced this first effect you will see that uh, the mental agony ota one kame jaye ah ei je jokhone janben je eta to amar nei amar nei janle যে সব মেন্টাল অ্যাগনি থাকে না ওটা দেখবেন খুব কমে যায় চলেই যায় বলতে গেলে ওই যে একটি ঘটনা বলেছিলাম আমার একজন বন্ধু বললো আমাকে স্টোরি দ্যাট মাই ওয়ান অফ মাই ফ্রেন্ডস টোল্ড দ্যাট হি ওয়াজ গোয়িং ইন এ ক্রাউডেড ট্রেন অ্যান্ড দেন হি হ্যাড বেয়ারলি স্পেস টু স্ট্যান্ড সাম হাউ and he had a newly purchased leather bag and he had therefore kept it somewhere and he was stand standing holding on to the bar and the train was running and in a few minutes he saw that somebody uh, has kept food on that bag and he saw thought in the mind the bag is now gone I just I bought it now, and this hefty fellow 
uh, has trampled it underfoot. Oh, and now when I get it, in what shape it will be, who knows? And all through the journey of that uh, hour and a half, he was just thinking, thinking, thinking about it. Oh, my God, God. And, uh, oh, oh. Mm. and then when his station came, the train arrived there. And then uh, he went to pick up that bag to get out. And he saw that was not his bag. <laughs> his bag was uh, just elsewhere, uh, just near that. And it was intact, nothing had, it was not my bag. All he said, look, uh, all the, uh, the situation just changed. What happened? That fellow is still standing on that bag. But <laughs> it is not mine anymore. How relieved you feel. It is not mine. And when we get this awareness about every single thing, then how free our mind will be, friends. So this is the way out to impress upon us that nothing is mine. Everything belongs to God and let us offer it to God. Uh, I see we don't have much time. As I will read a little small passage from Swami Vivekananda, this book, Karma Yoga, which you must have read. But please reread it as many times as you can. Study it again and again. Uh, yes, I tell it many times that I have read this book no less than 100 times. And yet I feel so much inspiration, so much guidance coming out of uh, every line of it, as it were. So, uh, Swami Vivekananda says, uh, says here, this is page uh, 106 in this edition. He says, this I and mind causes the whole misery. With the sense of possession comes selfishness and selfishness brings on misery. Every act of selfishness or thought of selfishness makes us attached to something and immediately we are made slaves. <laughs> uh, it is uh, the chitta uh, that each wave in the chitta that is the mind stuff, chitta that says I and mind immediately puts a chain around us and makes us slaves and the more we say and uh, say I and mine, the more slavery grows, the more misery increases. And, and this is a matter of experience, friends. Uh, it is each of us can experience it. The more I and mine, the more misery has to come, more bondage, more slavery has to come. And therefore, reverse now, uh, reverse. So, uh, I'm not going to read much, but this is the idea that uh, reverse the cycle. And then the things will work. That this work will become the means of liberation. Uh, a tool by which we can gradually get liberated instead of getting bound together. I had told you, I think, that incident uh, that our uh, pump was not working. Uh, it is the pump that was pulling up water to the tank from the well. So uh, uh, I put on the switch to get the water in the tank from the well. And I was hearing the sound that the uh, pump, that motor is going on. But uh, no water was going up. Now what happened? Uh, and then uh, we called the mechanic that something is wrong. The pump uh, means the motor is working, but the water is not getting pumped up. 
and he came in a couple of minutes. He just fixed it very quickly. The water started rising. I asked in astonishment, what happened? Oh, the connection was reversed, you know, that the positive and negative that became changed and therefore the motor was running, but it was running reverse. So instead of pulling the water up, it was not doing the job. So work, if the connections are right, will liberate us. Simple two-minute job, you know. Put the connections right. And then it will liberate us. Otherwise, it will pile more and more bondage on us. So that is how we can get liberated from uh, this terrible bondage of work. So thank you, friends. Amar onik bhalo lagche apnara shobai amar kotha mon diye shunechen amake ei opportunity diyechen apnader sathe kotha bolte ami shobair proti otib kritagyo ar ekhon jodi kichu prashno thake ami chesta korbo uttar debar e please there is our juhi she can read the questions well for me Although I have this in front of me, there is Shovik Roy. For uh, uh, Shovik Roy has a big question, isn't it? Yes, but there is one question before that. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> the first question is from Ratan Dhar. Mm. And uh, he says, um, Pranam Swamiji, very Pranam. grateful to have the essence of scriptures. If I understand correctly, Duties vary from person to person. Are there duties that are common for all in order to purify our minds? That's a very good question. There are some commonalities, some duties we uh, are we have common. For example, all of us eat, all of us uh, breathe, all of us take care of our body. And that is a common duty for all. Mm. It is, but... Again, we have to do it unselfishly. Means this is not I. I have to take care of this machine. Uh, like you take care of the car, fill the car with gas, uh, oil it, lubricate it, and whatever needs to be done, do it. So this body is a machine that we use. Mm. So everybody has to do this duty, isn't it? Uh, to take care of this machine. Uh, so these are the common. Then there are certain common duties uh, because this machine, this body is connected to so many other bodies. Uh, somebody is child, uh, somebody is spouse, somebody is parents, uh, somebody is friend, somebody is neighbor. So uh, there are these connected duties for everybody. And you have to follow those. Uh, that is a common thing for all. Otherwise, yes, everybody's duties are different. And one has to, according to one's stage in life, according to the skill that one possesses, and according to need of the situation, our duties get determined and we have to do that. The duty of A may not be the duty of B. But as you asked, that are there common duties? Yes. Some of these are common duties that uh, since we are all members of the society, to keep the society clean, uh, to protect the neighbors, uh, like uh, putting on the face mask, uh, depending on what my understanding is, uh, I have to put the face mask to protect others and protect myself as well. So this is a duty. This is a, a common thing that we should do. So uh, these are what I mean that suppose somebody in your neighbor, uh, they, you see some smoke fire coming up, uh, it is, it is, you have to go, you have to call uh, the 911 
uh, because that neighbor might not be at home to call and so forth. So these are the duties that are common to all because we are all members of the society and we should be uh, responsible members instead of unresponsible members. So these are like the common things. But then, uh, is it uh, Ratan is a professor in that university? Uh, I also have to go and teach. That is not my duty. That is Ratan's duty. Now, uh, Ratan should be doing it with this attitude of offering to God. Uh, but I, I don't need to do that. Uh, I have my other duties. So these are the duties that vary. And there are these duties which are common as human beings uh, in the society to all of us. Thank you. So this is a long question from Sanjukta Roy from New York, sixth grade. So she says, Pranam Maharaj. Pranam, Namaskars. My question is, if we died in a specific way in our past life, would we have that fear in the second life? For example, suppose you died from falling off a cliff in your past, past <laughs> life. In your second life, uh, will we have that fear? I mean, afraid of heights because that's how we died in the past. Is that possible? It is very much possible. It is very much possible that many impressions of past life gets carried over to this life. Uh, you will know this, uh, that if even in this life, uh, if you fall down from one place uh, and your limbs uh, get hurt, so next time you will find it kind of uh, uh, scary to do that. You will be very careful not to fall because you had that uh, experience once and it wasn't a good experience. It was very painful. So you will be scared of doing it. Uh, that is true. Uh, it is scary yeah, for many in this life uh, itself. So you can imagine that that same thing would be happening uh, if something has happened in the past life. Many who started driving the car and met an accident. Now what happens, uh, it becomes that stuck in their brain. Uh, they are again afraid of uh, driving the car. It is, uh, that does happen, yeah. Okay, next question from Shiri Shrao, Pranam Swamiji. Pranam. Is it possible to work without desire? Aren't all actions driven by desire? Uh, Yes, right now as it appears, there is no possibility of work without desire. Uh, true. But by practice, it becomes possible. Uh, like, you know, uh, it, it, was, uh, it is not possible for somebody uh, to uh, make a long jump. Uh, say, maximum I thought that I can jump for four feet. But then by practice, you can increase it to five feet, to six feet, to seven feet, to 10 feet more also. So it is matter of practice. Mm. So uh, that is uh, how one can gradually learn to work without desires. And one desire therefore has to be developed to make uh, uh, working without desires uh, easier or even feasible is that strengthen the desire to realize God more and more in life. Very good, Shirish. Okay. Last question from Jyoti. Pranam Swamiji. Namaskar, Jyoti. How do we handle family or colleagues? who strongly hold us responsible for failures in spite of our best efforts in trying to do work as an offering as much as possible? The one answer to this question is, uh, 
कैन यू कंट्रोल व्हाट यूर कलीग्स आर गोइंग टू डू वी कैन नॉट कंट्रोल व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू एंड यू वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल व्हाट यूर कलीग्स आर गोइंग टू डू we cannot you and you only have the choice of doing it to the best of your ability when you do it to the best of your ability that's it now there will be every you know person will look at it from uh, that person standpoint and they will hold you responsible they will criticize you Uh, and uh, one good thing about it is you may be able to learn certain things from that that you did it to, to the best of your ability but there could be ways of doing it still better uh, because your best of your ability might not be uh, enough in getting the work done you may be able to enhance your ability by that and second thing one has to understand that uh, everybody tries to hold somebody else responsible for the mistake ah, our language changes i was telling to our juhi the other day and it is she is very good but uh, we all are you know victims of that kind of thing that if good thing happens i did it Uh, if the things do not go well mm, it happened like that uh, that uh, we don't want to take blame for any wrong doing let it be reversed that okay there must be some mistake done by us we always think that i am so good mm. but uh, it may be just my delusion in fact if we introspect we find that we are not as good as uh, we imagine uh, and then our understanding about ourselves change it's so you know a very nice incident that happened uh, long long ago so one swami was telling me oh you know that man you treat him so lovingly uh, but he speaks all the bad things about you so i said very good you know let him speak bad things about me let me assure you that he cannot speak so bad things about me as bad as i actually am so therefore it is it is he is actually underestimating my badness don't worry so it is jo ghar khoje apna mujsa bura na koe that is what kabir says therefore <laughs> so very good you do everything very nicely jyoti i know you are a very sincere worker but you cannot control what the others would say try to get some education from that whatever their criticism might be and see if that can improve you that's it people who are saying good things about us actually do not help us at all <laughs> uh, but if somebody is pointing out some faults um, uh, there is a chance there is an opportunity for me to introspect i think mm. so thank you very much so uh, maybe in february again we may get an opportunity to have some spiritual discussion on a wonderful topic so uh, ratan and all my friends from new york uh, queens bronx and that and all others who have been listening i am tremendously thankful to you all uh, let us conclude uh, with the salutations to vivekananda tam deshikendram paramam pavitram vishvasya palam madhuram yatindram hitaya nrinam naramurtimantam 
विवेक आनंदमहम नमामि